What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech, and today we're going to be continuing on with the Proxmox Beginner Series. Today we're going to be focusing on networking. So we're going to talk about setting up a separate network in Proxmox for our virtual machines, or if you wanted to set up a separate network for whatever other reason. We're going to talk about VLANs a little bit, and I'm also going to touch on adding another network interface if you do have one. So I actually started this a little bit before as a little demo, so I'm gonna show you really quick what we're gonna be able to do after this video. So I'm gonna head over into Big Lab and I'm gonna show you the network I made. So I'm over here in Big Lab and you see if I expand it out, I have the couple of machines that we've been working with. And if I click on Big Lab, the node itself, I come over to network, you can see that I have VMBR0 and VMBR1. I'm gonna talk about all this stuff a little bit more in a few minutes. But if you come over here, you can see I have a 192 network and I have a 10 network. This is actually the network I made for my virtual machines. This is the management for the actual Proxmox server. So if I come over to the Ubuntu machine, if I do IPA, you can just see that this is assigned 10, 10, 10, 2. Now if I come to the Windows 11 machine that we made a couple weeks ago, I'll do a quick IP config. See, so I'm 10, 10, 10, 5. And if I ping 10, 10, 10, 2, you can see that I can reach over to the network. So you can see that we built a network inside of Proxmox. And now we have a separate network that these machines can talk of. And if I actually come over here and I ping off my regular host, you can see that I can't reach it. So here's 10, 10, 10, 5. I'm, I'm on the same physical network, but I can't reach it because now we've segmented this virtual network inside of Proxmox. So we're going to talk about this a little bit more. I just wanted to show you a quick overview of what we're going to be doing. Now let's get right into it. So to start off, I mentioned before we have the network tab over here. So if you actually click your node and you come to network, you're going to see something similar to EN01 and probably VMBRO. So what these stand for is this is the actual network interfaces that might be on your machine. If you're on a computer that has multiple network cards or maybe a server that has multiple network cards, You'll most likely see EN01, EN02, however many NICs you have. You're only going to probably see VMBR0 unless you created more virtual bridges to start. So when we did the initial setup and we assigned our IP address, this is how we got VMBR0. This is a VM bridge. This is how we connect the virtual network of Proxmox back to the physical network cards or interfaces that we have on our server. Now we can continue to create additional virtual networks. I created this as an example for this demo, but I could still come over here if I want to create a network for another set of virtual machines I might be running. Maybe I want to keep them separate from other virtual machines. I can come over here and I could just click Linux bridge. I'm okay with it being VMBR2. If you want to change it to something else, you can. I can make it something like 10, 20, 30, 0, slash 24. Now I don't need to put a gateway because it doesn't need one. I'm not really connecting this back to an actual gateway. The Proxmox host will do the routing for us. And I'm kind of making this as a standalone network. So I don't need to assign it to a bridge. So I could just click create. And now over here, you can see that there's this, this text in this box saying that it needs to apply. I could just come over here and click apply and it's going to create this new virtual bridge. So now you can see we have VMBR 0, 1, and 2. So now we have multiple networks that we could work with inside of Proxmox. So let's say if I came over to this Windows machine, I come to hardware, I come to the network device, I could edit it, and I can change it now to VMBridge 2. I can click OK. And if we come back to networking, the only thing we need to account for is there's no DHCP. So we're going to need to manually assign these. So now I'm going to give myself something in this 10, 20, 30 slash 24 subnet. So I can just reboot this really quick. And I'm going to reboot this and then we'll, I'll show you how we assign the addresses and how it's going to join this network. So I'll be right back. So we're back in Windows. It rebooted. You can see that there's no network, which is fine because we're still on the old network. So if I do an IP config, I'm still using the same old original network, but I just need to update it to the new address. So I can just come into network ethernet and I'm just gonna edit it. So now I could do 10, 20, 30, I'll do two. My subnet's the same, so we're fine. And now over here, if I go back into the command prompt, you can see now we have that new address. So if I had additional machines on this network, I'd be able to have them communicate across and have Proxmox do the networking for me. 
Part of the Proxmox system is that it has switching and routing capabilities as well as firewall capabilities. I'm not going to talk about firewall capabilities today, but it is something if you're interested we can cover in the future and you could also mess with it on your own if you want to. But today we're going to focus more on the network and portion of the switching and the routing. So that's what we're going to continue to cover. Now I'm going to talk about another way that we can kind of separate our networks and what's going to be VLANs. So I'm going to show you how we can set those up. So now to start about the VLANs, I'm just going to show you really quick. We're over here in Windows 11 in the Proxmox settings. I'm over here at the network device and you can see that I'm back on the VM bridge zero. This is my internal network in my house. Same thing if I come over to the Ubuntu machine, you can see here's network device, VM bridge zero. I'm just going to show you really quick. Over here is the Ubuntu machine. It has a 192 address. And if I ping Google, it reaches out and gets the internet. Same thing over here. You can see I have my IP address. I'll just do it again. You can see here it's pulling an address and I can ping out to Google. And just to show how all the networks connect back. So now this virtual network in Proxmox is actually connected back to my physical network. So if I'll just grab my IP and if we look over here, it's 192.168.30. So if I come over to, this is off my physical machine, I'll do 192.168.50.30. You can see that I can ping across to this virtual machine. Now with VLANs, we can create another virtual LAN or a virtual network and break the network into other pieces. And we can make it that it no longer can access other areas. So I can segment the virtual network from the physical network, or even further, we can have multiple virtual machines over here in Proxmox, and we can make it that only some can talk to others because they're not gonna be on the same network per se. So if we come back over here to Big Lab and we're back in the networking tab, I need to set VMBR zero to be VLAN aware. So what's gonna do is this virtual bridge is aware of VLANs as they go through the network. So as the traffic from certain hosts is getting tagged for whatever VLAN it might be on, it knows where and where not to send that traffic. So I just need to click on it. I can come over here where it says VLAN aware and just check this off. And we can actually limit it to whatever VLANs we might want. So you can make it as a range or you can make it one or you can make it specific ones if you need, you know, two, four, eight, however it might be. I'm just gonna make VLAN one for now. So you do need to start at two. I, I misread it even though I looked at it twice. So I'm just gonna make VLAN two. And now we can click OK. We're going to apply these settings and now we're all set. So I can come over to Ubuntu. I can come over to this network device again. I can click it. And now over here you can see we have the VLAN tag. And if you don't have it, you can just come over here and click advanced, but you should have it no matter what. I can assign this to VLAN 2. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm just going to open up the Ubuntu machine and I'm just going to reboot it so it gets the latest settings. Now, I'm not going to update the Windows 11 box, and I'm going to show you how the different networks can't talk to each other now in that way. Now, VLANs can be a little tricky if it's not something you've worked with in the past. Just think of it as we have our home network at our house. Let's say we have a slash 24, so we could have about 253 hosts, give or say. We might not want everything to be able to communicate with everything else. We might not want our IoT devices to be able to reach everything across our house or everything inside our house to be able to reach our IoT devices. Let's say you have like a smart doorbell or you have, you know, maybe cameras and you don't want the cameras accessible from the entire network. We can break our network in our house up into a smaller piece and we can VLAN it by creating this virtual network inside of the larger network. We can assign all of our cameras per se to VLAN 2 and everything else in the house might be on the regular network or maybe a different VLAN. What it's going to do is we're only going to be able to reach the cameras now from a loud host. So let's say your PC might be where you want to be able to access the cameras or maybe you have a DVR. The DVR would be on the same VLAN as the cameras, but nothing else would be. So the DVR would only be able to access the cameras, but somebody's phone would not be. So that's kind of how we can split up networks so everything can be either more secure or so it doesn't have access fully. Maybe you want your servers to be on a different VLAN so they don't interact with anything else in the house or interfere with traffic or something like that. You can VLAN out your servers on VLAN 3. They can't reach the cameras on VLAN 2. 
but your computer on VLAN 1 is also a member of VLAN 3. It can reach your server, but you can also get it from, it from your workstation. I know this might be a little bit of a confusing topic. If you don't really grasp it, you could ask ChatGPT, it'll explain it to you, or you can look online and it'll explain a little bit more. I just don't want to spend too much time going into VLANs. Okay, so our computer's back up, so I'm just going to log back in. You can see that I still have the same address. All I did was come back into the Ubuntu VM and I changed the IP address so now it sits on the 192.168 network that I use in my house. Except it's on VLAN 2, as you can see, it's tagged 2. So it is on the network, but it's VLAN out, so I shouldn't be able to reach it. So if I do 192.168.57, you see I can't ping it. If I come over to the Windows 11 machine, I do 192.68.57, I can't reach it either. You can see over here it's getting unable to reach, so it's it's segmented out. That's how this works. So if you had multiple VMs in your Proxmox node that maybe you want them to talk together, but you don't want other machines to talk to them, this is how you can separate all of them so they have their own little virtual network to work with. And you can create however many VLANs you want. You can use additional network interfaces if you have them, and you could set it that you know this VLAN will only go out this network interface, and then it could go out to maybe a physical switch. If you have like a VLAN aware switch or maybe you're using VLANs on your router or your firewall, whatever you might be using, and then you could route that however you might want. So this is just how we could do some, some base level networking in Proxmox. One more thing I do want to show is how to add a network device. So I have a USB NIC. I'm just going to show you how we could add it really quickly to an existing Proxmox node. So I have this USB NIC. You can see it's just a plain USB and then it's just a gig NIC over here we could use. So I, I've done this in the past where I could just plug it into a PC and I can give it a second network interface by using this. Of course, if you have like a PCIe one, you're going to have a better response. Or maybe you, you want to expand your network that way so you could put a regular onboard NIC into the PC. It's going to work very similarly. I'm just using a USB because that's what I have free right now. I'm going to put this into the computer, cable it up, and I'm going to show you how we could add this into Proxmox. So all I did was plug that USB NIC into my front of Big Lab, and I just plugged it into a network cable that plugs into my switch that connects back to my physical network. So now we can see that the new NIC did come up. It's ENX7 with all these extra characters. It's still going to work the same as how it's with EN01. It just has a longer string of characters. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to double click on it. And I'm going to copy this because we're going to need this for later. We're not going to change anything in here, but we do need this string of characters. I'm going to come to create, and then we're going to do a Linux bridge. And now you can see I have VMB3, which is fine. Now over here we have bridge ports. So remember we copied this, and that's just going to be the interface we're going to be using. I can give it an IP address, and I can make this on my physical network if I want. So I'm just going to look for an IP address really quick, and it doesn't look like I have anything on dot .6. So I can make this 50.6 and I'm going to make it a slash 24. And I could just add this if I want. And now we can see we have to apply the settings again. I'm just going to click apply configuration. And now we have a secondary NIC on our host. I'm over here in the Windows 11 machine and I'm in the network device and I gave it VM bridge 3. So that's our new network over here that is using this other NIC. So it's going to be a little different because we're not technically routing this fully back to our main network because I can't assign the same gateway twice. So if I had another network inside of my house, let's say like a, a another 10 network maybe outside of my main network, this is how we can route that across or if you are able to split up some networks in the physical net equipment you have, that's how you can connect it back and use multiple networks inside of Proxmox. This was kind of more for a demo, but if you you were going to add it and you had more networks, you would also come over here and add the gateway and make sure that it's a different gateway than it's already being used on your host. But this is how easy it is to set up another network interface inside of Proxmox. So pretty much what we were able to do was we were able to add additional interfaces to our host. We were able to make more virtual networks. We were able to start implementing VLANs and make VLAN aware Linux bridges and assign them out to our machines to kind of separate the network a bit. So I know I covered a lot of topics of the network and of Proxmox in this video, but there is a lot to it. And this was just kind of a brief overview of it. And you can, of course, dive deeper into it in more studying or looking up some stuff online about it. You can kind of really build out a pretty strong network based on Proxmox. Like I said, it's able to virtualize a lot of the physical networking functions inside the actual Proxmox host itself. 
So it's just another way that you can handle the networking and throughout your virtual machines, the host, the physical network, and, and much more. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, you could drop a like and comment on the video. It really is going to help it out. And make sure to subscribe so you can continue to see the Proxmox videos that I'm going to be putting out. As always, I'll have links to all the gear in my home lab if you're ever interested in checking it out down below. I'll have a link to the Discord. And I want to thank you all for watching. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.